Hey everybody, I hope and pray that you're doing well. Today as we come to our word from the word, and today that word is shattered. Shattered. Now, you may be feeling like your life has been shattered, it's fallen all apart in all different kinds of pieces. Uh, that may not be you. And it may be that coming one day, it will feel like everything's going to fall apart. And I believe if we're honest, we've all had days where it does seem like just, man, everything, you know, whatever could go wrong has gone wrong. If you're watching daily, this is a Monday video. And I know if you're experiencing that on a Monday, you just feel like, man, this is going to be a terrible week. But now we take all this in the context of Isaiah, and as he's telling them here that Babylon is going to fall. And there's a, uh, there's a phrase here that's used that I think is very applicable for us today, just as it was for the Israelites then. So Isaiah chapter 21, look at verses 6 through 9 today. And he says, For thus has the Lord said to me, Go set a watchman, let him declare what he sees. And he saw a chariot with a pair of horsemen, a chariot of donkeys, and a chariot of camels. And he listened earnestly with great, care, with great care. Then he cried, A lion, my lord, I stand continually on the watchtower in the daytime. I have sat at my post every night. And look, here comes a chariot of men with a pair of horsemen. Then he answered and said, Babylon is fallen, is fallen. And all the carved images of her gods, he is broken to the ground. Now, some of the other is, really seems to be that from history would tell us that that's the way that uh, their enemies would have marched in. And that's why he's there seeing these, uh, the way that they would have marched in. And that's why he knows Babylon is fallen. The end of the day, the word coming from the Lord is that Babylon was going to fall. Uh, as we looked at all the different oracles or different um, judgments against all these different nations, we've seen this throughout. Now, as you go on and you read more so than what I just did, you will see that God is still telling the Israelites, why are you putting faith and trust in all these other nations? Why are you putting faith and trust in all these other little G gods? Did you catch what he said there in the end of verse 9? All the carved images of her gods... He, God, has broken them to the ground. They're shattered. And let's be honest, there are times in our lives where we have decided to put up idols in our lives. We have decided to worship something other than God, whether it be material possessions, whether it just be that almighty dollar, whether it be even worshiping our family, where our family time is more important than our time with God. You, if we're not careful, even our ministry uh, to God within the church can become a, a God. And, and it can be that that's more important than actually worshiping God. And see, it doesn't always have to be something that, that appears evil. It, it can look at all the, the happenings with the Pharisees. A lot of them was actually, a lot of what they were doing was actually driven out of a desire to be holy but it became self-righteous and it got away from God's design. Look no further than Saul, who became Paul, right? He was killing Christians for the Lord until he realized he was really going about it all the wrong way. And then he was fiercely going in the correct direction after that. But what happened in all of those in all of those cases and and think about in your life there was a there have been days or maybe even before you became saved that you had this perfect idea of what life should be like and it didn't have anything to do with god or it was a distorted view of of god and in order for god to do a work in your life he has to shatter those little gods so maybe it was money that you were serving and, and maybe then you faced bankruptcy Right? Maybe it was your own strength and well-being that you worshipped and, and then sickness was allowed in. God had to shatter those things. Now, just because you had financial problems, just because you've had health problems, that again, I always like to reiterate this, that doesn't mean that it was because of sin automatically. But let's, let's take an honest look at our lives and say, you know what? Was it actually that I needed I needed that little God to be shattered there. I needed that money 
to be shattered. I needed uh, my relationship with my family or relationship with my friends or even the way that I related to God. I needed that to be shattered so that God could make it what he wanted it to be in the first place. See, with all of the judgment on all these nations, God ultimately, if you look at the big picture, he was shattering the fact that Israel should ever look to anybody else other than God. He had shown them this over and over and over and over again. The same way that he's shown you and I. Over and over and over again. That our government's not going to fix our problem. Money is not going to fix our problem. A job is not going to fix our money, our, our, our problem. Medicine is not going to fix our problem. No matter what you do, no matter what you say, no matter what you try, all those little things have to be shattered so that you can trust completely and wholeheartedly in the only one that does matter, God. And our relationship with Jesus Christ and the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. Let God shatter those other things in your life today. And if he has already shattered them, you say, I can look back and see when that, that Babylon that I had in my life was torn to pieces. Praise God for it. Thank him for what you have learned. And pray that you never turn. You never return to that Babylon type again. That you will trust not in yourself, not in others, but you will trust only in God. God bless you. And I pray you have a great, great day.